Welcome to the Tiger Interview Series. This episode is going to be about analyzing your own video like a pro. We have Cameron Ginger of Propel Hitting, who has an unbelievable ability to put video analysis in simple and easily digestible posts on Instagram. You will learn how to look at your swing on video and masterfully make adjustments in the cage. Enjoy. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Tiger Interview Series. I am your host, Spiker Helms, and I have a special guest. I've been following him for quite some time. It's actually been, I would say, probably a year so that far. Was. And yeah, and how I've gotten, how how it happens is that um, I like I like baseball content. Don't get me wrong, but there are certain accounts that I'm I, I'm very cautious of who I follow when it comes to baseball content. And this is one of the guys that is a must follow on Instagram. Propel hitting Cameron Ginger. He is with us today. Cameron, how's it going? What's up, man? Nice to see you, brother. Um, thanks for having me, and I'm I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to jam, man. Give us a little bit of a background how you got into the Instagram game and started sending out these very good posts. And there's there's a lot of baseball content out there. There's guys that do very similar things where they'll send out um, videos of mechanics and they'll show slow motions. And but what you do is very very genuine, I think, is that you're actually teaching through the caption box and through the description box, and you've created a pretty good following off of that. So give us a little bit of deep dive of Propel Hitting and what your premise was when you started the account. Appreciate your words, man. That's really, uh, I appreciate hearing that. That's really, that's really what we want to come through. So I'm really glad that 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 is what's coming through. So uh, I've loved hitting since the beginning, man. I, I went to my first baseball game when I was six months, man. So baseball's in my bones. So I, I don't have much of a choice for that. So, but yeah, man, just um, starting up from, you know, like me playing ball and, and trying to pursue bigger things. Like there was always just this elusive information, right? There was always this information that was only present with, with other people. Um, and sometimes they were willing to part with it and sometimes they weren't. And so, I just kind of grew up in that baseball environment. And, you know, as I, as my playing career ended and my coaching career started, I just started, like, learning how to do stuff, right? And, and then, you know, I was able to kind of see, like, that, um, you know, how I was communicating things was being able to help more people. And I said, well, like, I got with another guy that he was he was one of my – I coached him in high school, and I was like, man, like, you're brilliant. Um, will you help me? All right, let's just, let's just put some stuff out there to help people. And, and, and let's see what happens because um, I've just seen so many moments where light bulbs go on for people. And I'm like, man, like if we can do that through Instagram, like let's do it. And so mm-hmm. man, it's just, it's, it's just been a ton of fun since then. And, and, and we're really just about um, <clears throat> making success tangible and, and making success somewhere. Um, not something that you have to go purchase a program to get right. Every single time, like learning, learning how to do things, um, yeah, because I'm a big I'm a big teacher, right? As far as like walking with people and implementing, right? But to me, it's a, I'm a complete failure as a teacher or as a coach, as if they if they are not doing better without me. And so, um, you know, like I want my guys to hit the worst with me and the best without me. And so, like I, I think oftentimes in how people frame their language, they're almost coy, they're almost hidden with it right they'll show you a little bit and hide it right and i and i totally understand the business practice of don't give the cookbook away right and i think that's i think there's some wisdom to that but then at the same time like you got to provide value to people and there's so much out there as far as youtube or instagram or facebook right like this funny story true story right one of the facilities that i work out of for lessons there was a guy that came in and he was doing a drill that i posted not not completely specific to me right i had I'd found it from somewhere and then tweaked it myself right but like he was doing the drill that i posted and what he was telling these guys it was for was completely different than what it was for right and so it was cool because i was kind of able to like just be like hey man um you know it was kind of weird but it's like hey man like you're doing that so let me kind of help you so like you can this is what the purpose of it was and so um, yeah, man, we're just we're just real, just about being open-handed, and and because man, like, success shouldn't be determined on, you know, like if, if you can guess right, right, or if, if you can 
kind of fill in between the lines. And there's so many dads out there, and there's so many players that genuinely have a good heart of wanting to learn how to do it, right? And I'm moms too, like, but, um, yeah, so that was really the, that, that's really the design. That's really what, kind of what we, we fit mm-hmm. through, right? We're working through some stuff on YouTube that we're going to do too, and it's all just like that, you know, like, I'm just that kind of thing in series and, and just different stuff. Man. What's interesting about baseball and like pitching and hitting is that there are some concrete ideas, concrete thoughts. There are principles, but then there's a lot of gray area where you can work. Like one of your posts that I love is that you'll you'll show um, Acuna Jr. who has literally an arm bar. And then you'll show another guy that is completely bent all the way through his swing. It's two different players both playing at a high level and then you have you have these guys and instructors that are out there that are so aggressive like you have to do it one way that's what's refreshing about your account is that you will show the you'll show prime examples of one way to do it and an absolute another way so my question though is is that what's your general philosophy on hitting if you could nail it down, it's it starts at the center of the body for me. I think that's I think that's where the premise of hitting is, right? Because there's understanding how the body moves, understanding how the, the natural pulls, right? So like when my pelvis is off a little bit, there's going to be a pull from this hip to that. So like, I think understanding that holistically it is where is where a good approach starts, because um, yeah, man, hitting's hard. Like, things, things, <laughs> unless they move the mound back to like seventy feet, like it's it's so hard, right? It's, and so, man, I think I think it starts there. Understanding, even at a basic level, understanding ground force. Like, what is what is me using the ground? What does that mean? But how does that help me, right? Because, in my opinion, as you boil it down, hitting is an explosion with the baseball essentially Mm -hmm. right it's meeting the baseball and you want to meet that as well and as consistent and with as much power as possible so how can we do that right i believe that there's things that like make that easier but i do believe that there are things that have to be done right but i think my what's unique to my approach is that if in a society where we talk about the individualistic so much and i don't think that's a bad thing i'm not saying that um in baseball it's almost the opposite Right. Mm-hmm. It's well, you know, there's only three ways to do it. And it's like, are you like, I mean, just go down the line. What you just said, like Aaron Otto, Mookie Betts, Acuna Jr. are literally completely different. And those dudes are all having extreme amounts of success. Right. Now, it's true that like they're trying to stay through the zone as possible. They're trying to cut, like, do all of these things that I think are, are staples, but like they're different. Right. And when you watch, when you watch, say, someone like Yaz, right, from from the from the Giants, and then you watch Mookie, their practice is completely different. Mookie takes 10, 10 to 15 swings, and he's done, and Yaz takes swings till he gets it right, no matter how it is, right? So the point of that being we all have mentality, right? We all have brain activity that's different, right? I'm a big strength finders Gallup guy. It can't holistically be, hey, you have you can only move like this to be successful, and, and to me that's just the opposite of that's the opposite of learning, and that's the opposite of do do being able to be duplicable, right? Because um, it's like man, it's great if you're hitting well with your hitting instructor, but like, are you are you able to make adjustments, right? When you're at junior college, are you able to make a judgment because your coach has two? There's two coaches, and he has forty to forty to sixty guys, and doesn't have any time to hit with you. Can you find what's going on, and can you fix it? Right. Or try. Right. Because it's like at the same time, I got a family. Right. I can't sit on the phone with with you for two hours to try and figure it Mm -hmm. out. But but if I can go quick and you've done the work on the front end, then we can get it. Right. So I think overarchingly, it's understanding the body. Right. But then also understanding the importance of distinction and the diversity that, that there is with that. Right. That's the toughest part as a player because so because the coaches there's only two coaches technically on most teams, right? And so they have twenty guys, thirty guys, and so they're trying to figure out how do I get all these guys to actually hit? So it ends up becoming a cookie cutter approach, which again, I don't blame them, but at, but from a player standpoint, some players are like, Okay, he's he's jiving with my hitting philosophy, so I've got to listen to him. 
I don't think that's the right plan. I think what you need to do is you need to get exposed to a lot of different ideas very early on and figure out, okay, how does my body actually work? And having the, and having the premise of what you said, which is your core, your midsection, what's your pelvis doing, what's your hips doing, what's your core doing. That's so important. I think a lot of guys miss the boat because they're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do a golf swing and I can't do this because it's going to screw me all up. Like, dude, test it out. You don't know, like play, play golf for a little bit. You have no idea if that's going to mess up your swing or not. So I can even think of a time that there was a kid who's he's in college now, but like this, it was this past summer or two summers ago, maybe. Um, yeah, this past summer, he, um, he was playing golf a bunch. Like his, his dad's a big golfer. He was playing golf a bunch of he was, he was struggling. And I was like, dude, Put the ball down and golf it. Hit it to the back of the cage. Put it down there. And, man, because he was, like, he was doing some things. And, man, I had tried so many things to get him to do stuff. I right? also want to have the box person. So, like, I'm like, man, if it takes doing a car wheel, do a car wheel and hit it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I was like, I was like, man, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, I'm throwing it in the trash can. Right? And he put it down there, and he goes, bop, bop, bop. Like, I get it. I was like, I don't know what you get, but let's see. We get up there and throw beeps, and it's boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, he got it. He gets it. And I think what it is is just not being in a hurry to talk. Just listen. They'll tell you what they need. Even if, like yeah. I've been a high school coach. Or I've been a high school coach and a college coach. Like even in those situations, they'll tell you what they need. If, yeah. if you're willing to listen. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Where do your eyes go immediately when you look at a major league swing? When you're when you're the first thing that you pull it up and you see it and you're like, okay, this is where my eyes go immediately. What, what is that? I would say two things. I would say the, like the front leg, I'm like obsessed with the front leg, um, <laughs> their approach to the ball, as far as like their adjustability and stuff too. Um, cause I, I, I love seeing when guys bats gets in the zone cause they get in the zone so many different, so many different areas, even, even on real time. So like different, like different speed rates. So, like real time versus 60 frames versus 120 frames. Does your eyes immediately go to those same spots or do they, is it switch with the different um, yeah, speeds? I think, I think it switches, but then also at the same time, like I love watching like the ribs and the core move um, and just kind of like serve. Cause like, I believe that like separation kind of happens right there. I, feel, I believe like you can feel separation from the, the front of your stride leg all the way up to the tip of your bat. And so like, and that, that rib area is really where there's, like, good, like, stretch. And, like, just, like, being, like, watching guys, like, ride their ribs through. And I'm like, goodness, that's beautiful. Or, yeah. You know, I also like looking, because I do look at so many swings, I really enjoy looking at the the oddities, right, or the abnormalities or the things that are unique to those guys. Because, um, man, like, you watch Acuna, man, and he's just, he's literally front arm leverage, boom, get it going. And then, like, you take anybody else, right? Like, you take a, oh my gosh, Cameron, that, the uh, Madrigal, the guy, and like, you just watch them. But there's just so many cool things to pick up. And um, truly, that's where a lot of my posts come from, man. I'm like, yeah. dude, this is so sick. Let me watch this for 30 minutes. Where it gets interesting is like, you'll have the little guys that are doing like massive moves. And then you'll have big guys that are doing, they're starting to do massive moves, but then you have like the new hover, like Luke Voigt's doing the hover now. It's like, where, what's the, what's the thought process behind that? I just, I just find it super fascinating. Like you said, like the different, different abnormalities of, of just each player. Narratives are extremely important. Um, it, it, you hear it all the time in cages. You'll, you'll hear narratives when you're walking around the ballpark, um, about certain swings and what's, what is actually happening, right? What do you think as, um, a baseball community that is true right now, the narrative is right. And what do you think is false? Well, that's a great question. That's a great, I love that question, but it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of, there's a lot of discon, discontent right now in the, in the, in the hitting community. Um, I do, I do believe most of the time you can get everybody to realize that pitching is really good right now. Um, you know, I watched the, I watched a no name guy. Um, he's not a no name. He's a big leaguer, right? But he's not like a, he's not a perennial that everybody knows throw a one one and then go 96 with a cutter. <laughs> Sitting here, I'm like, <laughs> man, like, 
it's just, it's just so I think I think I definitely think there's some agreement there that hitting it, or pitching is just nuts. You know, like uh, I mean, Trevor Bauer yesterday was shoving. Like it's just there's so much there. I, I think I think where the disconnect starts is um, how far that responsibility goes into like that where the offensive numbers are right now, right? Because you've got one set that's you know it's the re- the reason all these you know mechanical issues or these mechanical tweaks are going on like the reason that there are more strikeouts and the games is more boring is because of these right then you got another you got another group that's like dude p- it's the pitching bro like they're pitch tunneling we're arguing on whether you hit on top of the ball or you hit level with the ball and um i think people underestimate tunneling Oh, they have no like it's it's, 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 it's mind blowing, man. It was starting it was starting to come out when I was playing, and guys were not getting it because it was easy to pick up baseballs when you started seeing like okay, there's a slight move in in his arm action, but now it's getting like pitching ninjas coming out with these uh, these overlays, and the overlays are so close together. We're back like five years ago. It probably wasn't as close, but like it's literally almost a mirror. Yeah, and like, man, like, I saw, this was a reliever for LSU, right? <laughs> like, I saw that, and it was the be- it was the closest overlay on a changeup I've ever seen. Like, he he went, I think he showed fastball, slider, changeup, and it lay look, the slider looked a little bit different, right, because he's young, but, like, dude, changeup is exactly the same. It was, it was just, it was literally just disgusting. And so, like, man, it's just, to me, it's, it, it's, it's a travesty that there just continues to be an argument there because it's like, look, but while we're arguing, they're continuing to progress. And like Bodie wants to like Kyle Bodie from Driveline wants to be the first person to see somebody throw 114 miles an hour because like that's where scientists say like the la- like the, the human body can't throw any faster than that. Like that's what they're talking about. And, and then you have like all these guys that are, you know, feel threatened by the new school and it's just like, look, man, like we're all on the same team. Beat the pitcher. That's the team that we're on. Beat the pitcher, right? Like, so like, let's let's figure this out, right? Because man, like, I've had a guy, like, as far as like swing down or swing level, like, be like, dude, like, I know that that's not what I'm doing, but I need to think down a little bit because I like mm-hmm. I'm, the down part of my swing. I feel like is a little choppy. I'm like, dude, perfect, man. Do what you need to do. Like, I, yeah. you know, whatever your mindset is, that's what that's what you need to do. And so. Twitter Twitter is really bad when it comes to the hitting community. The pitching community, I feel like, is all on the same page. Like, there's not as many arguments as as uh, hitting, but like you have these dudes that are just yelling like, "Oh, it's getting down on the baseball," or "No, it's getting up on the baseball." It's like Josh Donaldson has no idea what he's talking about. It's like, bro, let's just get on the same page. Let's figure out how to make this thing better. We have great technology. We have blast motion over here. We have win reality over here. How are we not promoting these brands? Um, it, cause again, if you're able to unlock with numbers, that's how driveline started figuring it all out. They're like, okay, we're going to base it off on data. And then we're going to just, we're just going to make the best picture that we possibly can. Well, and the and, cool part is like Bodhi has, and like, and Bodhi can be rough, right? Like, and Bodhi can lots of things, right? He, he wouldn't even shy away from me, from anybody saying that. Right. But what's cool about their environment is if you listen to Ochar talk, Right, he'll say at, at drive line, you are not allowed to give an opinion. You have to give an opinion with facts, because if you get an opinion, you're going to be told to leave, because nobody cares what your opinion is. You got to prove it, right? And you got to prove it with data. They're just data guys, right? And so not everybody's a data guy. Well, then don't go, don't go train your drive line, right? Like yep. go, go train with somebody else. But like, I just I just don't understand. I just don't understand where the disconnect is to to be unwilling to to even try it or look at it. And I think that's that's what keeps me going right so much with like my post and like what we want to do with the, the Propel brand. Like that that's what keeps me going is like man like like you know you have the A Rod video that came out whenever it did right where him talking about what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he got he got off the baseball bandwagon real quick after that video. <laughs> and, you know what's sad is like so I was while I was watching ESPN. I can't use to do ESPN, ESPN just because of him and other people. But they're doing a game right, and they were talking about the velocities of the pitcher, and like, 
And it was, you know, they were talking about how there was like 1,500 more pitches, um, like two years ago that were 97 plus, and were five years ago, right? And and he, it was something to that effect, right? And then he goes, you know, and they're talking about that, and then in the same sentence they're talking about one, like being able to string three hits together every inning to get it to get a run. I'm like, bro, like that's just not him. That's not. It's not gonna happen. Like, oh, I mean, realistically, that's cooler than two because everybody's average goes up. And everybody gets RBIs. That's, I mean, who wouldn't want that? But then at the same time, it's like you got 101 and 96. Like 96 is hard enough to hit as it is, man. Like, it, and, and so I, I, my greatest, I think my greatest passion, my greatest goal is that we would all just kind of like unify. And it's like, hey, man, if you're Mike Trout and you literally think hit the ball down on the ground in front of the plate, bro, do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Well, like, you can, you can find, you can find feel like this, right? Let's just agree. You're not doing this. You're doing. That, you're thinking about the downward part, which is good, but like, yeah, let's just all agree. Like, hey, like, I like focusing on the part that's in the in the hitting area, and you like feeling the, the downward part, being like, I got to be crisp there. Cool, great, but let's under let's understand that there are two parts, right? Yep, that's that's what I love about the Josh Donaldson video because it was right at the same time that Albert came out, and then Trout came out. It's like these guys are th- totally thinking differently than anybody else, and you've got to take that in stride. Like you just can't say like, "Oh, that guy's an idiot." That guy has no idea what he's talking about. So it's just it's understanding the terminology too, and being um, yeah, being all. Man, I remember, I remember when the Donaldson video came out, and like people were debating on when he talks about overspending a ball, right, and just balloons and come back. I'm like, that's not. There's no debate on that. Like literally. <laughs> The design of backspin is to get it to a peak, right? Rise to a peak. Well, what does it do when it gets to a peak? It doesn't just stop spinning. Like, it keeps spinning and it comes back. So it's like, yes, you want backspin. Yes, you want lift. Yes, you, but you want all these things together, right? And it's like, man, just shh and listen, right? That dude's <laughs> insane, man. Zen, Zen Penny actually got to go, uh, like, have some conversations and stuff with him. We were literally like, bro, you got to call, like, you got it. He's like, I can't record anything. I was like, I know, but you got to call us afterwards because he's so smart and you know all this stuff, man. So it's just, I would just love to see like people take ownership of their swing like he does. Because in my opinion, there's nobody that knows their swing better than him. Oh, he, oh, he, he comes out with just gems and he'll just talk about it, and guys will listen. <laughs> they should. They should. If for no other factor that he's smart and he knows his swing. What variables like do you do you consider when you watch like an MLB swing versus an amateur swing? Because because that's because that, that's a hard that's the hardest part when you're teaching somebody you're you're looking at this kid and then you're looking at like a Mike Trout swing and you're like that that doesn't look anything like Mike Trout. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, man. I, I think I think first and foremost people have to realize how um, insanely athletic um, major league guys are, right? And and, and tangibly understanding that. So watching Mike Trout do a 70 inch box jump with no running start, right? If if you don't have some kind of basis for understanding of that, you're probably going to struggle, right? I remember I think it was two off seasons ago I'm watching this. I'm like, that human beings don't do that. A gazelle could do it, but not a human being. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's really important to kind of know like Mike Trout can do insane things with his hips that like other people can't do. He decelerates with his hips on a, on a way that you could never teach because he's just um, he's just got some ability that was just he was born with and so I think it's really important to have perspective right of um, hey this guy this kid is 12 or this kid's 16 right like or his you know he hasn't got his man strength yet or she hasn't she hasn't stepped into you know like she's starting to mature now or like what I think that's really important <clears throat> that's why I think it's also really important for like how you like as an organization, like how you do your strength and conditioning, because like a lot of stuff that you get at school, and even if you get like some of these, some of these places that have like pay for people to come in and train them, you know, um, they can only do so much, right? So I think like hip mobility and knee mobility, and you know, all those things are really important. Because if they weren't, you wouldn't see guys like Matt Frazier um, spend half of his time working out. Is is the flexibility part, right? So I think that. I think that's really important to, to understand and understand that like we want to have the movements that he has, but we may not be able to get there the same way, right? Like the, the cool thing about elite athletes is you can tell them once usually, and they can get it in about two swings, right? But then like with guys that aren't elite, most of the time by age, 
because they're just not there yet, you have to come up with more ways for them to be able to feel that, right? Like, I, like I remember the first time I got told a guy one thing, and he did two swings. Like, yeah, I can feel that. It's right there. And I'm like, I normally have to come up with seven other drills to get you to feel it, right? So I just think mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't necessarily body aware. I don't even necessarily think that's taught super well, like PE classes or whatever. Again, like, no, I'm not at fault for anything, right? But I think it's just a reality. And so, like, people aren't super body aware, right? And that's actually one of my favorite Donaldson quotes is when he talks about, in my, he says, in my opinion, being body aware is probably the top part priority because you've got to be able to feel it. You've got to be able to, because, like, dude, I can't tell you how many times I'm sitting with these elite hitting instructors are like, do this, and I'm like, I am. And I just keep saying it, keep saying, it. I'm like, bro, like I'm doing it, like, but I, but what I felt like I was doing and what I was doing just clearly were two different things. And so I think that 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 body awareness is is kind of that's a big differentiator, right? Like, because like someone like Trout is so finely tuned, um, when one hair is is not combed right, he feels it, right? And so like youth kids or people that aren't on Mike Trout level, which is like two people, right? Everybody else is below that, right? Yeah, they don't know that as much, and so I think that I think that's really where it starts. It's weird too because I've I've had I have multi multi sport athletes, and everyone says, "Oh, be a multi sport athlete because it'll help with your swing," which is true, it is. But at the same time, sometimes those athletes aren't really good at body awareness. They're just they just do it, and they're like, "I'm just playing to win." Uh, But then I'll have a guy that all he does is play baseball. And his swing, like the guy, I had a guy help to you. I will give you some credit on this one. So he, he had, he, he was 13 years old, hit 10 home runs as a 13 year old. So yeah, pretty good. Right. So, so big brain, yeah. yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you 10 of those anyways, <laughs> but he, he's very aware of his body. He's able to make that adjustment like that. And he doesn't play multiple sports. He just, he swings a lot. And he really thinks about his swing and and really looks at himself in the mirror constantly. So that's it, man. I think that's dry swings are so boring, but they're so important. And yep. it's so hard to sell kids on that, man. It's like, yeah, stand in front of the mirror for thirty minutes to do swings, <laughs> man. Like, I got it. Like, there's TikTok videos going on right now. What you talking about? You know, like, yep. but that it's huge, man. Because you just like. Or video, right? Video is easier sometimes. People like to watch themselves, but yeah, I think I think what you're saying is so amazingly spot on, and it's so important because, like, um, being able to teach, you know, or understand how you do it um, is is as important as what you do or why you do it, right? I think mm-hmm. I think for me, like when I've helped run organizations, right, um, plus. You know, just doing brain research, right? There's a lot of studies out there that'll talk about if you can teach it, you will retain 85 to 90 percent of it, right? Who knows where they get those numbers? But essentially, what all they're saying is, if you can teach it, you're gonna you're gonna know more. So we we were just real conscious about our guys having to teach. They would learn something new in practice, and they would they were required to to help out with younger practices because if you can teach it, then you can duplicate it, right? And there's so many guys that came and coached with us and, and did other things that they went back and played and like, man, I'm a better player. I'm like, yeah, because you can teach it and you understand what I'm saying is not working, so I need to say it a different way. And and that's a skill, right? That That's something that you can learn. And so I really believe that that's important. And so, like, it's, yeah, man, it's, it, that's where extreme hitting success starts, in my opinion, is, is, is self-evaluation. So weight shifting, I, I I go back and forth on this. So you have guys that say you want to be 50, 50 when you get to launch and you say, and then you have some guys that want to, that say 60, 40, some say 70, 30. And I've gotten to the point where I'm taking more of an Aaron judge route, which is I want to really think about my back hip and I want that back hip to be tense all the way through and, and release it onto that baseball, that energy. What's your thoughts on weight shifting? Um, how do you, how do you view it? And how do you teach it? Besides the individualistic parts that we've talked about already, I believe that the most important part about weight shift is big muscle engagement. Or I would say big muscle primary engagement because your big muscles are going to be going to be a part to play regardless of if you're thinking or not, thinking about it or not. But 
I believe that it's really important for them to be very engaged. So you watch a guy that has a leg kick like Justin Turner, or you watch a guy that's literally toe up, toe down. Um, there is at some point there is there is that back of the glute hamstring hold, right? Is what I would call it. Like just the control of it, right? I've I've never seen somebody control their leg kick so well as Justin Turner. Like it makes no sense. I mean, he literally almost hits his chin with his knee every time. And I believe that that's core engagement. I believe that that's oblique engagement. I believe that's big muscle engagement. So I'm, I'm very, I would say I'm not super picky about the weight shift, um, more about the, the, the muscle engagement part, right? So take like, you have like a Juan Soto, and then you have like a, a, a Mookie Betts, right? When, if you look at slowed down pictures of Mookie Betts, his back leg will go, and he's so far, um, and he's like freaking 70, 30 on the front side, like when he's finished, right? And he's just so stretched, and he goes. Um, then you have Juan Soto, who's very deep into the back leg, um, and then he goes from there, right? I, I really believe that a lot of it just, I've, I've got to feel that engagement, right? And, and for me, I try and use the language of muscles because it's easier to feel the muscles even surrounding the hip than it is is the hip, right? Because because like a lot of times I think what, what what comes from hip, at least with younger guys, is you'll get a hip flexor move. And the only problem with for me with the hip flexor move is the hip flexor does this. That's it, right? And so a lot of times you'll, that, that hip flexor will uncoil or unspring, right? Which is going to cause a move there, which can mm -hmm. throw my direction off a little bit, right? And so, um, you know, there was a kid that, um, a guy that I was, you know, helping was, was he was trying to figure out what it was. And I just saw that hip flexor just kind of coiling and uncoiling, right? And it was just, he's like, oh, he's like I'm, on, I'm underneath everything. I was like, you feel like you're underneath everything because your, your path is getting thrown off, you know, as it enters. And so, um, yeah, that, that's really, that's really what it is for me. I think that there's a preference. I think you can look as the swing commences that almost everybody gets to a place of 50, 50, um, but I don't think it always has to be in, um, initially, right? I'm a, I'm a big balance guy. So I think there's a, so like with my guys that I teach, it's a little bit more of like just feeling both leg engagement. Um, Cause I think when the pelvis is, is sometimes too, and when it's overlaid, it's going to, it's going to underlay on the back end. Um, and so mm -hmm. there's always an adverse reaction. Right. And so, but that, that, that's really what it is for me. It's just like the big muscles. Like, do you have big muscle control and is your core or is your core help by like, controlling that move forward as well? Yeah. So for people that are trying to catch up on the conversation, um, we're talking about that load and stride. So when a player starts his starts his load and going backwards, and then as he gets into launch, for me, launch is when his he gets to heel plant. So his front foot heel plants into the ground. And so we're discussing whether should should it be more on the front side when he lands, or should it be more on the back side, or should it be fifty fifty in the in the hitting world. It's uh it's always a debate when it comes to should you be athletic? Should you be on your backside? Should you be on your front side? And so f for me right now, I'm really like what I'm finding success with my guys. And it could be just the players that I have currently is that I'm taking more of an Aaron judge type of route, which is he really thinks about, I gotta, I gotta have tension in my back hip, which you were talking about with that hip flexor. So that hip flexor is right into the middle of the quad and to the core. So he's talking about that coil action and making sure that it stays tense as you're getting through the zone. So, but again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I do believe, you know, even with, you know, cause like a lot of the terms that like, um, that he'll use is like, I want to feel it around my rear leg. And so, um, I think, I think there's a lot of good that comes from that because like, Again, um, a lot of times when you're when he when he's talking about getting around his rear leg, he's engaging those muscles around the hip socket, and so he can really feel that right because there's some muscles that press up against that hip joint and the bone, and so it makes it very easy to feel: am I disconnected or am I am I staying with my tension point? And so yeah, I, that, that, that's why for me it's a muscle answer, right? Like because you have some guys that don't do a back shift at all. Right. And, and, and so, like, I think I love the belief that I think that the um, adjustability is key 
because being able to tee up balls and um, you know hit a fastball that's up is is really really good. But you're not going to see that fastball probably ever, right? It's going to have some kind of run or some kind of climb or some kind of high spin. And so yep. yeah, the ability to be uh, the ability to be ju- adjustable is 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 with the is with the front leg and not losing what you have with the back, right? Because that's what's hard is sometimes like. You can lose, you can lose what you have at the back, and like, man, that's like, there's so much there. There's so much there. Yeah, and you'll and you'll see, and you'll see um, guys that try to get that engagement too, because you'll have that heel clamp on the load. Arianado does it. Trout has started to do it. I don't, I don't know if he's done it before in his rookie season, but it seems like I'm noticing it more often than not. But it's it's interesting because they're trying to feel that squat position. Because like in squatting, that's what you're that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit sit in that heel. heel. That's right. And that, I, I think that's a great, I think that's a great thing. Right? I've, I've had my guys do jump squats before and then feel it, just feel that, that engaged, right. Both, both parts of the leg. I think it's, I think it's really important. Load and stride. And we're going to get into your front leg here in a little bit. <laughs> you're seeing the bigger leg kicks and you're seeing the Luke Voigt hover. I feel like Luke's kind of putting that and I'm sure in five years we're going to see a lot more guys doing the hover because he's having a lot of success. Um, where do you stand on the the big leg kick versus a little leg kick versus uh, just heel heel toe? Yeah, absolutely. Toe heel. heel. Yeah, I think um, I think with any movement, I think it's very any kind of leg movement, whatever that is, it needs to work sequentially with how the load works and how the, how the body and the load works. So like, if you'll watch a lot of times, oh guys front their their stride, um, however they shot a leg kick, toe tap, whatever it is, is very similar to how their hands move and how their hands interact. And so like, um, I've seen a lot of like guys are like, Hey, like what, what's your front leg, your front leg and your bat need to be seen, synced up. So like whatever they're doing, whatever you're going to do, you need to be comfortable with that. So don't come to me and say you want a leg kick, when you're like leaving the bat on your shoulder and then just picking it up and stepping away from your hands, probably not that it won't work, right? Because you got that Rice Hoskins guy for like for for the Phillies, like he, um, you know, like he says, I step away from my hands. He says he has a leg kick. I mean, kind of, <laughs> like, <he's just> <laughs> with it, right? But um, so you know, I think I think the big thing with a leg kick or, or anything like that is you got to have control. You gotta have control of that movement, and I I do believe that's why so many people want want to feel a little bit heavier on the backside, because they don't want to feel like they're traveling forward or their neck and their spine is moving too much, right? Because that's why it's really cool to watch. Like so, Josh Donald's a big movement guy, right? But one of the things that you can see with his swing is that his foot doesn't really travel that much when he when he strides as a leg kick, and so, um, you know. It could be that or a toe tap, right? Like Vladdy, Vladdy Jr. does a toe tap, and you know there's been some great toe tappers before him and stuff too. So it's really just like a, it's kind of, I, I think it's very personal, um, but I think there needs to be control in that movement, and then the the back and the front and, and the back and the body and the front leg need to be synced up. Whatever those movements are, right? You say Pujols when he was earlier in his career when he was so wide and his hands were so so placed back there. He didn't need movement, right? But his 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 heel went up and down. And his hands didn't move a whole lot either. He already had his, his preset separation. He already had all those preset things, and so like his hands didn't move a whole lot. And so I think it's really important as you're kind of fine tuning, like what is that or what that what could that be, is syncing syncing those movements up because they gotta they gotta they gotta go together. Yeah, I I totally I totally agree with that. And I I've gotten to a point where I'm just I'm tired of debating it with my players. And I've gotten to this I've gotten to this point where I'm like all that matters is we got to figure out your load and are you feeling tension in your backside? I don't care what your front leg does, but you have to keep tension in that backside. If you lose tension in that backside, you are SOL when you start attacking that baseball. 100% and that, and that truthfully like um the guy the people that want to switch to a leg kick a lot of times um, think it's think switching to it could help them for a reason, right? And so even like watching those videos about Rice, right? He thinks he has a leg kick because he was saying like, hey, like, you know, I was a toe up, heel up, heel down guy in college and now I have a leg kick. I'm like, bro, your leg comes off the ground that much. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a hitch. That's exactly it. I always just call it a leg lift, right? But I, I think all of it has just got to be 
staying within the frame of the body, right? Whatever that is, right? Feeling the leg movements come from like below the shoulders, right? And not getting a bad angle this way or whatever. And so like, I mean, like there's just, there's a bunch of cool dudes that hit, that hit tanks that have leg kicks. I mean, I don't think it's changed. Everybody hit like Griffey when I was growing up. So I mean, like, yeah. no, I would never teach anybody to swing like that. Like all cockeyed like that dude. So it's just, yeah, I totally get that. What's your personal preference? Of, of the of the leg. What 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 do you like seeing out of players? Like what what just looks good to the eye? Um, I would say kind of in, an in between, like just a regular stride and a leg and like a leg kick. Um, I think that allows for some sinkability, then also like uh, more release of the explosion from the the the, the back side of the body. I think that, I think that helps people get into the zone a little bit more because they like. They feel like they're in sync with the ball, um, but I mean, one of my best hitters right now is is a is a heel up guy. So I would never change it on him. He looks beautiful. So, yeah. What um, what do you think about the front foot debate? Um, we're already on that lip front leg, so I figured why as well talk about the front foot. Um, Donald Donaldson comes out and he says that you want to be completely wide open, open door, and it was just it just sh- sent shockwaves. And I disagreed with him. I disagreed with him. I was more of a Chase Utley type of guy. I wanted to keep myself closed. I wanted to make sure that I was hitting the ball the other way. But again, that that was my game. I wasn't a power guy. And when he started saying that, and I started experimenting with it. It's I was like, like holy, holy crap, crap, he might, he might be, be right. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> because it makes it makes sense, right? Because it clears the hip and you're able to rotate farther. So what what's your what's your thought what's your thoughts on this? I think I think it is too strictly pushed to stride completely even. Um you know, some people naturally stride closed, some people naturally stride open. And I'm not saying you want to be I, I think I think the the premise of the entire um subject matter is your hips just need to stay this like pinned this way until it's launch time and that's why I, I, it's so funny you ask that because i'm actually working on a post about that like the front toe being open right and then like the length of that the, the back hip can actually like work um but i think that it's really really important to just realize the hips that just need to stay this way it's and people like a donaldson or people like chris davis or uh you know people like um, Rizzo does it actually he's a little bit past 45 and so a lot of times you won't see those guys their front foot peel as much either because there's just more space to operate and, and I think I think it's just one of those things that it doesn't need to be completely rigid but just understanding yes nobody wants your foot to be pointed this way and your hips to be in the third base dugout that's stupid that's not what he's saying right like Bo Bichette does that right he um he opens his front foot and his hips stay his hips stay square and so i think that's the biggest part about that wherever it is is the hips just need to stay pinned like i say like safety pinned to a wall right Mm because your foot can do other things but then that i think it also helps separation a little bit when it's open like natural separation happen when the foot's open a little bit so yeah i think it's yeah i think it's totally totally goes against the old school guys like oh now you throw your hips in the, the trash can over here it's like no 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 we, we just you could your foot can land wherever you want right like What's the sequence foot, exactly pitchers don't land with their foot even yep. they land it pointing they land it pointing at the where they're gonna you know at the same direction so now now my hips both hips and my pelvis are pulling my arm instead of me having to throw it across my body so yeah. Well, also think about Chase Utley had a Chase Utley had a lot of injuries, and I think that has to do with his front foot being closed with all that torque and all that power. Because I mean, that dude could mash. Bro, people people do not understand how much torque there is coming to the ball. Like people don't get it, right? Like that's. I mean, you look at someone like Aaron Judge, man. Dude, the dude can't stay healthy because he's so stinking strong and he's so so stinking big, right? He's like he's not only like tearing his obliques, he's like ripping them from his body. <laughs> It's crazy because there's so much torque going through. Well, even John Carlos Stanton, that's another dude. I mean, yeah. like, and and him close. Like, I had a player the other day ask him, like, why why is John Carlos stand closed? And I was like, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to touch that with a ten foot pole. We're not even going to talk about that because we are trying to focus on you keeping your feet square. 
<laughs> so I don't want to open the Pandora's box because then you're going to say, well, John Carlo does it and just keeps repeating John, <laughs> John Carlo. Carlo. <laughs> That's funny. What do you what do you like to focus on more? Are you more of a hands guy um, or are you more let's focus on getting the back elbow slotted, um, get the front elbow going towards the pitcher? Like, how do you how do you think about it? What I've found in the communication of trying to get guys to get in the zone, stay in the zone, have success with the barrel, I've found more success with the elbows, talking about elbows. And here's why. Because the elbows is kind of the center point of so much of that appendage that we have. And so what I, what I have what I have seen and experienced is, you know, talking about a little bit more about the elbow kind of um, gives gives the hands more control of the back. Um, and, and then also like engages all the stuff back here. So like if you're properly turning, right, not just like throwing your hands at the ball, the post contact is really important too. And so I believe that, excuse me, I believe that like this engagement back here, you know, is is really important for the for this the stability of the barrel. Um, and so that's a lot of what I've seen um, success with. But I also do think it's important that the hands need to know where the barrel is, hundred percent of the time. Right? They've got to know. Hey, here's where the barrel is. This is how you know I'm gonna go now. Right? Like I, I do some stuff where I'll have guys take their hands off. Right? If they're kind of like losing the barrel or you know, each hand's kind of doing something different at, at the wrong time. Sequence, and then as they're getting ready, they grab the back. Um, so I, I think I think they a lot of times they focusing on either one is somewhat specific to what 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 the kid is going through at that point. But I mean, like I was working with a over the, with a guy uh, Tuesday, and like we were talking about L and. It, and bringing like skipping a rock with the elbow or like whatever it was, and and that was really just helping him. Like he's like, I don't have I don't have to feel like I'm you know I, I'm happy to manipulate the bat, and so I'm just real big on like letting the, you know like letting the bat just kind of not follow and drag at all, but just like the the hands are just holding on and holding the direction, right? I'm letting all my big muscles throw their torque to the ball. Hip shoulder separation explain it because I don't think a lot of coaches know what it means and how important it is. And when they do, and they would, when they, and then when they do talk about it, um, it's kind of like slotting the elbow. Not many people really know what slotting the elbow really means. They just, they just literally say slot the elbow. <laughs> it's like, it's like when people just say, get your elbow up. It's like, no, 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 stop. No, no, so don't do that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's either slot, slot the elbow, get the elbow up. Um, and uh, make sure that you do hip shoulder separation. <laughs> well, and I, and I think the the best way that I can um, succinctly describe it is, and, and I, I got to give credit where credit's due. I, I stole some of this from this guy named Joy Cunha um, from Farm Boards. Um, well, they're not from Farm Boards, but they have like the farm, whatever, but they're known for their farm boards. And so he came up with a really good analogy. Um, so I think a good way to think about hip torso separation is you want your you want your separation to be like a seat belt right so when you take that seat belt and you pull you pull it across your body and it clicks in it's constant right it's a constant it's tight across it's tight across the, your whole body right and it goes across your midsection all that stuff when you are focusing separation based on something based on something else a lot of times it's like a tow cable Right, so I don't know if you've ever been in that, but like if you're in a car, the being in the trail car of a car getting towed with a rope is one of the scariest things, scariest moments of my entire life, right? Because <laughs> like you got no power steering, you kind of got brakes, like all these stuff, right? That ebb and flow of the separation, right? Because a lot of people think separation is from your hands and your front foot, right? Separation. Well, really, that's not something I can duplicate. How do I know exactly where my point is? every single time right so that the concept kind of plays into how can you have good separation when your front foot is open well my hips are doing something different than my upper body is right so my hips are starting and and like sequentially going in order right and then that's where my stretch of the seatbelt comes from here 
over, right? So a, a drill that I've done. So at what point? point so hold on. So at what point are we like, what point are we talking about in the swing? So, uh, people that are more of a layman's type of terms, like where, at what point are we starting to talk about hip shoulder separation? Absolutely. So like that, that, that will begin to happen as your front, as your front leg is finishing striding and getting into the ground, right? That squat, that squat feel. Is so heel, like so heel plant when foot, the foot to heel plant front foot, toe to heel is down then you start feeling the separation between the upper half and the lower half. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, and, it just, and it just feels like a, like a, like a band being stretched. Right. And so a, a lot of times what that'll feel like emulator wise as a player is like the bat will feel like it's a spring now. Right. And so like one of the things that I'll help that, that can help you feel that is if, so you, all you need is another person. So it's just like, um, so you, you, the other person's behind you, you take a stride and you just start your back, your back hip. Like it would be just like starting a little bit, you hold that position. And then the person behind you is holding your back. Right. And then you're trying to pull the bat away from them. And you're, then you're able to, and your lower half is start, your lower half is starting to work. Your hips starting to move. Yes. And so then you're able to, then you're able to feel, oh, wow. Okay. Like there's where my, there's where my chest was different than my hips. Right. Uh, but I don't, it doesn't need, it is not like going around, like turning around, you know, trying to get like corkscrewed, like to where my bat's around hitting my ear, right? But it's just the ability to like let my hips move into a stride, right? But then my chest is staying where it is, right? And then creating that, that's like a lot of time, like a, like a scat move. Not always, right? Some people are here or whatever, but like they're different. Boba Shad is a great person to look at that. Why not? He does a lot with his shoulders, and I don't think everybody should do that. But for understanding purpose wise, or, or Chris Davis is a really good one to look at. Um, I mean, they're all, they're all over the place, right? A bunch of them are. So um, I think it's really important. It, it just, it's, it's the natural stretch, right? And so my, it's essentially like my ribs are doing something different than my hips, which is going to naturally be able to put me in the same release point in the release area as opposed to me trying to do it with my hands alone. Barrel path. Should, how should we tell our players how to attack a baseball? We, we foreshadowed it earlier in the podcast. Um, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? Because if you do look at the physics of what's actually happening, um, Devin from driveline who does the youth program, he has a really good graphic on his header that actually shows the ball doing this and the hitter swinging more up. So like that's actually happening, but what's the verbiage that we need to tell our players for, um, bat barrel path. I think, I think something that's works as far as communication, but then also like understanding is, um like visuals are really important but then like understanding like there's a there's a, a mound that's elevated 18 inches and you've got somebody who's let's say five foot six foot whatever so they are now if you're if you're five foot eight and this person's six foot they're already several inches taller than you now you put them up 18 inches taller than you and they're going to throw with their on their arm above their head so the ball naturally has to come down at us at an angle. So trying to meet a downward angle with another downward angle is not impossible, but it is more difficult. And so then not only is it difficult, more difficult, it's the, your ability to adjust and variance is very, very difficult. And it's very, very short. So I believe that the pre the premise of that is enough to look at where do I get more ability to be successful, right? If I miss, which happens all the time, how do I get, how do I maximize my misses? To me, what I've found through watching, listening, working with people is just matching that angle that's come, that the ball's coming in on, matching that angle kind of at the best you can. So and I think a really helpful way as far as like teaching and instructing that is you want to engulf the hitting area with your angle right with your approach angle i don't want to just swing to a ball i want to engulf it so like let's say you know especially youth wise right there could be one guy 
throwing 68 and the next pitch it's the exact same fastball but it's at 64 right you can't teach that kind of variance without the ability to be longer in the zone at the beginning or at the end and so being able to be wrong but still be true and get hits is what i believe helps things be successful most with with the bat path some people think this some people think what all of those and some and sometimes it works but to me, if the best result is is backspin, right? If that's what you're looking for, backspin has an end, right? If it, if once it reaches its peak, it's gonna keep spinning and it's gonna balloon back. And so, I just want to be able to engulf the ball as it comes through, right? Um, and I believe matching matching the angle that it's coming in with the bat is a really really good way to do that. Two strike approach. You had a really good post. Um, I think it was a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, um, about the two strikes. What's your thoughts on it? Um, should we tell? How, if you were coaching a team, how would you go? We, you got to go down swinging. You got to put the ball in play no matter what. Um, no, we we want to go with. You're gonna still gonna hit your pitch if we take a punch out looking. We're totally fine with that. Yeah, I think. Especially in the youth ages, I think it's really important to <clears throat> teach a, um, I would say, a non-passive mindset. And so what I mean by that is not just sling, swing at anything, take selfish swings. Like, I'm not, I'm not advocating for that at all. But what I am saying is that um, there's a lot of people that get in a, get in a defensive posture with two strikes. Um, and... You're completely changing your body. You're completely, um, you just, when, when you think about something like, for example, this is where my psychology stuff comes in, right? But like when I think that um, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to mess up, I'm not thinking about not messing up. I'm thinking about messing up the whole time, right? And so I think it's very important to the mind. The mindset has got to be that which of, um, I think your, your approach just simplifies Right. If it was um, being be on time or work to the big part of the field, now it's hey, I'm going to see this really early, really long, and I'm going to be on time. And I think, you know, I think that's where people struggle as far as two strike approach. Even even when you practice it in practice, um, there's not pressure, and there's no there's not there's not a shift. There's no consequence to it. Right. I'm not saying like you just have to push ups or anything like that, but like. Um, People get afraid of pressure because it's hard to emulate pressure, right? But if you put pressure in the room and you talk to pressure um, and say, hey, not today, then you get more acclimated to it, right? And so I believe that with two strikes, I want my guys to um, aggressively see the ball and have a simple approach. And so I, I believe, I, I, like, I want them walking with confidence, right? I want them... Every time, like if, if, if it's 0-2 and they work back to 2-2 or they work back to 3-2, like every time that pitcher throws a ball, I want that pitcher like shivering more and more and more because they, I want my guy saying like, like putting out the, the, the thing to where it's like, um, yeah, like I'm getting nervous now as a pitcher. I've missed two in a row, right? And he's got to see my curveball or he's got to see this, like I'm in trouble. And I, and I believe it's impossible to do that from a defensive posture. And so... Um, I'm just real big on, hey, like, this is you. This is you. You're all about this. Like, now you just get to now you just get to look for one pitch, right? Because you know he's going to throw you some crap, right, or whatever. This is just like conversation, right? But so for me, it's like uh, just like summed up. It's it's simplicity and just aggressive with your eyes. Just aggressive with your eyes and like don't be afraid to fail. Like it's okay. Like I think that's a good. I think that's a good master plan on eliminating pressure because you hear everyone that talks about like pressure, like, Oh, that's, that's, that's the separating factor, but no one tells you how to deal with pressure. I always, I always like putting the case of Tom Brady where he literally like it was in the NFC championships championship and he fumbled a snap and literally just looked at the football, grabbed the football, looked down, down the field, saw Antonio Brown and just threw a dart. That's understanding pressure. You, you are in the biggest game 
of the of the season so far and you have these massive human beings coming to attack you and kill you and you literally see a football lying on the ground where like a college guy would just let it like oh jump on the football don't do anything else it's that's a really good approach for hitters is that when you got pressure just simplify to a certain degree of like let's just see the ball and hit it i really like that a lot i, I think it i think it's one of those things that can really help you produce what you want to produce because like it starts here man it starts here like that's what makes baseball so hard like and it's like bro like if they can see that you won or they can see whatever like i'm gonna I don't, I don't think it's i don't think it means you can't make a physical adjustment right but the physical mm-hmm. adjustment has to come from the mindset and the approach right like yeah. but was shit like he he goes to a toe up toe down and he's got a huge leg kick right so I, it's not even saying that you can't do that but i think it's just a you got to be careful with going into a defensive posture because like bro as a catcher i can see it i can smell mm-hmm. it i can smell it like okay i got you right here man watch him on those picks that don't make you look stupid that's just yeah. you can smell it Cameron, this has been an awesome conversation. Um, how can people reach out to you? How can they find you? Um, go ahead and plug away uh, your accounts. Absolutely, man. So, so we're on uh, Propel's on um, Instagram and and YouTube. Uh, we're just at Propel Hitting. We've got um, if you want to want to reach out to us, we've got an email too. It's just Propel Hitting at Gmail dot com. Um, we're starting to do a lot of stuff on YouTube that we're really excited about, and so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful for you, man, and grateful for the ask, and I love to just be able to, like, you know, talk about it, and really, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, our why and, and our mission statement is um, to make success tangible for, for anybody, and so, man, like, um, I'm, I'm glad that if I can play any role in that, like, that's what I want to do, man, because there's a lot of noise out there, and there's a lot of confusion, and so, and that's not good for anybody, man, so I, I appreciate what you're doing, man, and it's 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 uncommon, and so just just know that that's a big deal and, and the, the humility that you walk with man is, is is a big deal and your your kids are gonna definitely appreciate that i appreciate it man this is awesome um guys follow propel hitting follow the follow him on ig you'll love every post make sure you read the descriptions because again you can look at the video 500 times but if you don't read the description um you you might get a different inkling and a different thought that might trigger something to where you hit 10 home runs in the season so <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the kind of stories i love man cameron thanks again guys we'll, we'll see you later